Welcome to chapter 2.1. Um, we are going to start dealing with inequalities. As we see in question number one, it says write the sentence as an inequality. So let's read it once and then let's tackle it. 12 is greater than or equal to five times a number. So what we should be looking at is greater than or equal to. So we need to understand what that means. And then 12 is part of it. And then we have five times a number n. So if we break it all down, 12 is greater than or equal to five times a number n. And we can just write 5n. That's going to be the easiest way to tackle that problem. One third of a number h is less than 15. So we again, is less than is the inequality. One third of, of is multiplication, a number h is less than 15. So what does that look like? That is one third of a number h is less than 15. The other way you could have had it, you could have had a third of h is less than 15. I'm okay with one third h. To me, that makes sense. One third is times, oh my goodness, I just found a cricket in my room. That was weird. And it was a big cricket too. Number three, seven, seven less than or equal to the difference of a number Q and six, all right? So less than or equal to, and then seven less than or equal to the difference, that's subtraction, of a number Q and six. So that difference is talking about those two things. So we have seven less than or equal to the difference of a number Q and six. So we would end up with that inequality. Sum of a number U and 14 is more than six. So I'm gonna look is more than, and we have the sum, and we're gonna sum of a number U and 14. So those two things, and then we have is more than six. So the sum of a number u and 14, that's the sum of those, is more than six. More than is greater than sign. So we like that as our inequality. Tell whether the value is a solution of the inequality. So we're gonna plug in 19 for d, we're gonna substitute it. We're gonna substitute the value 19 in for d, subtract it from seven and see if it's less than 12. 19 minus seven is 12. And is 12 less than 12? No, it is not. So that is false, so not a solution. So 19 is not a solution to that inequality. All right, we have our next inequality. We have nine is greater than or equal to three. We're gonna plug in one for n. And orders of operation tells me to multiply first before adding. And then three plus six is nine. We're always gonna simplify the left side completely and simplify the right side completely. Three plus six gives us nine. Is nine greater than or equal to or equal to? Yes, that's true. So since it's true, that means one is a solution to this inequality. It is true, so yes, it is a solution. Number seven, we got some fraction work. Two thirds is less than or equal to three times one half minus one sixth. We again are gonna do, we're gonna simplify this right side. Three times one half is three halves minus one sixth. Now we're gonna add these two fractions together. 
So I have to find a common denominator. Common denominator is six. Two times three is six, so three times three is nine. Two thirds is less than or equal to, that was a really bad less than. Nine sixths minus one sixth is eight sixths. And let's reduce that. Two thirds less than or equal to four thirds. And is two thirds less than four thirds? Yes, it is. That's a true statement, so, so it is a solution. 1 half is a solution to the inequality. Okay, this time we're plugging in 1.6. Negative 8.4 is greater than negative 5 times 1.6 plus 2.4. We're going to multiply negative 5 times 1.6, which is negative 8, plus 2.4. And negative 8.4 is greater than negative 8 plus 2.4 is going to be negative uh, 5.6, I think. Yeah. And is negative 8.4 greater than negative 5.6? That is false not a solution. So 1.6 would not be a solution to that inequality. All right, problems 9 through 12, we're going to graph the inequality. So this says the solutions are greater than or equal to 3. So we can include it and the solutions are greater than, so my solutions would go to the right. And that's all I need to do. I need to have a closed circle, which includes the boundary, and then it would go to the right. Uh, x is less than or equal to 4. Again, we have a closed circle. This time, the solutions are less than, so we would go off to the left there. You need arrows on your lines. Make sure that you are notating correctly. X is greater than negative 1. This time we're going to have an open circle because we do not include negative 1 as a solution, but everything infinitely close to negative 1 and to the right is going to be a solution. So that one would look like that. Number 12, X is less than 1. We have an open circle. And again, we go to the left here. And, no, oh, they didn't do that. I would have liked to have seen one where the variable did not come first. That would have been a fun question to see if students recognize that the variable didn't come first. So be careful of that. I will be putting that on an assessment. Number 13 says write an inequality for, that represents the graph. So we'll pick a variable. We'll say n is going to be greater than because the values are increasing to the right. And we do not include an equal sign because it's an open circle. And we write the border. Its border is 1, so n is greater than 1. Doesn't matter what variable you use. We'll use a different one. p is less than 0. Again, noticing that it's an open circle. So we would not include that uh, the border for that closed circle. So we'll say w is greater than or equal to negative 3. That would be my answer for that. And this one would be, uh, let's give a fun letter. Let's do um, g, yes. g is less than or equal to 3. It's a closed circle, so we can include the solution on the border. 3 is a solution. The graph shows the weight capacity of an elevator in pounds. Write and interpret an inequality that represents the weight capacity of the elevator. So we know that the weight must be less than or equal to 2,500 pounds. It can be equal to 2,500, but it needs to be less than that the maximum weight can only be maximum weight, max weight is 2,500 pounds. Anything less than that is okay. 
Anything more than that would be no bueno. Not okay. All right. Let W represent the number of students who walk to school and R represent the number of students who ride in a vehicle to school where R is greater than W. So we have more kids riding a vehicle than walking. So more kids riding than walking. So if this is going, oh yes, we just saw this. Using a current rate greater than R tends to ride. Oh, I don't know why I, did, why I didn't. Yeah, so um, that shouldn't be there. That's part of my <laughs> answer. So if we know R is going to be more than W. So R, let's do an example. R is 10. That means walkers have to be less than 10. So it's going to be 9. So if we have that, is 1 half. So R is 10 over 19. So that's going to be more than half. And if we do another example, and we did this in red. Red students, you know this example. This is very similar to the problem that we did in the notes in 2.1. What if we do um, something, um, let's do something small, 2 and 1. So is 1 half, um, so R's R's in the numerator. My bigger number is always going to be in the numerator, and so that's true also. So this is a true statement. This is a true statement. And then we can get a little crazy. Let's get a little cray cray. Let's do R is 100 and walkers is 1. So is 1 half less than 100 over 101. Yeah, right, that's what we do, yeah. So that is definitely over. So we need to understand that that R value is always going to be more than half of that. That's our extreme we saw in this one. Yeah, so this statement is always going to be true, always true. Always true. That value is always going to be greater than one half. Yeah, pretty good. So uh, have fun with this. Uh, enjoy it and keep practicing.